Yeah, they told me that. Uh, Wait, you're scared. I was like, man, you can't talk. It doesn't hurt. I'm just like, I can't talk. What's going on? Right. And I told him, I was like, I did like 15 podcasts last week. I'm like, maybe that's what it is. Last week? Last week, yeah. Dang. And then uh, so they said he has laryngitis. So I'm like, oh, crap. Here we go. <laughs> but we're going on vacation in like a couple of weeks or next month. And I'm like, I got to get these out because I'm not going to be able to do it mm-hmm. just to get them all. I got you. Oh, dude. So thanks for doing it, man. No problem. <clears throat> Got you back on because you got some new music out and coming out. Got and some new also just to chat because we, we're the type that can just bounce off one another. Right. We figured that out last time. So, uh, so what's yeah. been going on since last time? Um, that was a while ago, what, yeah, last year or something? Yeah, it was. So um, the funny thing is is that I've actually done, this is my third interview now that I've done oh, yeah, since... Yeah, yeah. Since um, our podcast that we did the first time, did you do podcast? Just I did. I did another podcast. There's this um, there's a website called um, 520 Collective, and they're like a indie Christian rap website kind of deal. Okay. And they I did a phone call interview with them. They did like these. They interviewed like 30 artists, and like <clears> a, like they did like an artist each day type thing, yeah. and I was one of them. And so okay. That was fun. It was like an eight minute talk. Eight minute talk. That's probably better than an hour, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it was just well. The thing with those short ones, I've I've done them in my time, like mm-hmm. five minutes, six minutes here. You just have so little to like, so little time to talk about anything. Like mm-hmm. you tell about this thing when it's over with, kind right. of, you know. But talk about this new song you got now, and then we'll go with the flow. <laughs> All right. So um, the newest song that I've released is called Free. And uh, it was a song, it was a one minute, one verse type song. I just wanted it to be quick and get it done with. I didn't want to push it as, I didn't want to push it and lower the quality of it. But um, it was a song that I released as kind of like a response to all the trouble that we've yeah. had going on in the world. You know, like I wrote, I started writing it um, when I found out about Ahmaud, Ahmaud Aubrey's death. And so did then, you know who that was? Did you know them personally? No, I did not. Okay. I did not. I mean, um, I knew he was away, but I didn't yeah. know if he just... I actually, I do know some people who live where he lived. Though, so okay, was, okay, yeah. But um, Ahmaud Aubrey's death kind of inspired it was, inspired me to start writing it, because I was like, man, that's wow, that's and crazy to think that it happened. I found out about it three months after it had happened. Yeah, and I think then, everybody um, kind of... Yeah, cause yeah, everybody did. I think, yeah, it was just this big boom. Yeah, and then... um. So I started writing it, kind of didn't really, I think I finished it, but then I went back and rewrote part of it after George Floyd's death. Yeah. And that was what really, like, I was like, and then I talked to some of my friends, and I was like, hey, I have this song, it's an important song, but I need to know, like, when should I put it out so it doesn't look like I'm putting it out, it's like at a bad time, you know? I didn't want it to seem like or, I was... Or putting it out to benefit off what's happening. Right, yeah, you know what the, I mean? like, that was you, exactly yeah. why I... I pushed it back a month after I had recorded it and had it done. I didn't release it until a whole month after that. And um, it was just, I knew that I didn't want people to, I didn't want it to come off that way. And so I just made sure, talked to, uh, I'll probably talk to about 15, 20 friends of mine, all, well, majority of them were African American. Yeah. And um, I just said like, yo, I want to do this. Like, I want to drop this. This song is important to me. Whether anyone else listens to it or not, this is something that I want to drop. And then, I, but then I was like, okay, push it back. And I was okay with that. I was totally okay with that. I pushed it back at like a month and a, a month and a half, I think, maybe yeah. a month and a half back. And then I dropped it. And I want to say after checking it yesterday, I think it just had 500 streams on Spotify. And so it's not my. It's not bad though. It's not my best performing song this year, but it's not. It's still doing. It's still doing good. It, I think it got a hundred plays in its first day, so that was the first thing that for me, kind of. And um, I guess by the time this comes out, I will have dropped my newest song, depending on when this drops. When, when is the new song going? The out? new song is going to drop September twenty fifth. Okay, let me tell you what we're gonna do. The fifteenth of August. We'll wait till that comes out. You'll send it to me, and I'll play it. All right, cool. Let's just let's make it easier. All right. You can say it's already out. All right, so my newest <laughs> song, uh, <laughs> uh, September 25th, is called Level Up. It features um, two guys who I've already made songs with, um, Caleb Tucker from Los Angeles, California, and Jason 
Um, he is from, I want to say, I think Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, I believe. But he's relocating to North Carolina, I believe. And um, he, those guys are two really good friends of mine who I haven't met yet, but I plan to meet them hopefully next year if I could make that happen. But um, isn't that weird though? You can do business with somebody you've never met. Like, yeah, it is. Face to face. Right. Yeah. Um, I've. But yeah, this is my song. It's called Level Up, mm. and um, it's this song has been. I've worked on this song for like about eight or nine months now. It's been a long process because, like, this is I've I've known that this was going to be one of my best songs that I've dropped, but it was so I wanted it to be so good that it took so long to work on it. <laughs> you know, I rewrote it a few times. Um, I had I had originally it was just going to be me and Jason on it, and then uh, we we knew we needed someone better doing the hook for it, and then. Um, I reached out to like five or six different guys, and I would have gone to Caleb earlier than I did, but I knew that me and Caleb already dropped a song earlier this year called Underrated, and so I wanted to be, I didn't want to necessarily get him on two songs in the same year, but then it was just kind of like a last resort thing, and he, he killed it, he knocked it out of the park. I honestly, I think I may like him on this song better than Underrated, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't think that matters to people if you have the same person on each song yeah. because it's you know it's just it's it can it can get old sometimes yeah, it can, but but, it, but these two the, these two songs are also kind of like really different. Underrated has kind of like a West Coast hip hop vibe, and then um, Level Up is like this hardcore like trap banger. But song. think about this: me and you were music guys. We know the history about music, and right? Stuff. So we we think, oh, you can't do it though. Mm-hmm. But if it's like sister or somebody was supposed to listen one like they did an album together and it doesn't matter like you know just right it's, it's weird how we it's also different. it's also kind of like it's also somewhat upsetting that not all fans are like that because like sometimes I, re- I put really like clever lines in some of my songs and you want to be hardcore and, and i want it to be like i want people to be like oh he said that and then it's like <laughs> uh, some like it goes right over some people's heads that's like that's weird because Take Eminem for example. Anything he says, people are just like, even no matter if he's rapping like 0.5 seconds at a time. Right. People are going to be like, oh, did you hear that? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Level Up should be out by the time you hear this. This is, I guess, my first interview to do talking about it. But yeah, it's been a song that I've been working on for a long time. Happy that it's out. Ready to see how it does. We're putting a lot of... Um, I've taken more steps into being more professional with my music. I'm uh, doing a lot more business stuff with my music now. Um, I'm registering my music with like these performing rights organizations so that I can try and get a little bit extra money from it. Probably won't get too much unless the song you know just like blows up. But if the song does blow up, I made sure I went ahead and got all the official rights for the beat that I'm using. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try and push it to some like sports teams to use in promos this year. If they teams that are like gonna have sports this year, um, and yeah, I'm just really from here on out, every song I release is gonna be it's gonna have a budget set for it. And so this song, you said you were, the level of it's going, you're gonna send it to possible sports teams. Yeah, I'm gonna try and um, push it to just like there are these things, there are these uh, things called sound libraries, which right. is like. You can well, send in your music and like different, like whether it's an independent YouTuber. Well, what I was asking was because I know people that have had songs on things and they're looking for more music. So I can possibly. If you want to put, if you, if you want. That's why I was asking. Is it this big of a jam that you can send it off? Yeah, like That's this is. I was asking. This <clears throat> is a song that is going to, like this could be played as like a hype, like a okay. walk-up song. Okay. I mean, and I even know some guys like who play baseball, like high school baseball in college. Who, I like when I saw him. I was like, "Look, my next song is about to be your next walk-up song. Just, <laughs> just wait." Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. What did, is this? The longest song it took you to write, or the song it took you the longest to write? Because you said it took you like nine months. Yeah, I would say it's probably it's probably been the long. It's definitely the longest it's taken me to just make a song in general, and not necessarily just writing it myself. Because me writing it was only like twenty five percent of the song. You know, I had to wait for Caleb. I had to wait for Jason. Because you're to just wait. writing a verse in the chorus, or right? Something like it, yeah. And so it just, it wasn't necessarily. If it had just been me on the song, it would have been out like six months ago. 
but um, I've also gone back and re-recorded this song like 25 times. Do you do it at your house, or do you do yeah, it? Yeah, I record at my house right it? now. I'm probably gonna try and start going to a studio in Mobile, possibly. Well, let me let me tell you what my vision is for here. So you know, I do podcast, right? Right. I have been talked with different people, and they're like, "I need to record music, or I want to do it, but but I don't know how to do it." I've thought about opening up a recording studio here in town. Do it, like. And I thought about putting it in the buildings right there by Walmart. Just because those, that's like the main, the main street. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah, yeah. I thought about doing it, but I'm like, it could be a win-win or a lose-lose. But I'm sitting there thinking, I would say these people that are do that are saying, oh, they're going to do it, and they wind up not doing it, you know? That's the one thing is, like, I would say it would be a little difficult to do that because we're in Wiggins, not in, like, Gulfport or Biloxi. Or oh, I could move it to Gulfport or Biloxi. Now, if you moved it to Gulfport or Biloxi, you could have something there. Right. Like, that would be... Awesome, because, like, the studios that I've looked at in, like, Gulfport and Biloxi compared to studios that I've looked at in Mobile, yeah, the studios in Mobile are, like, ten times better, like, for what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, so, yeah, I'm, the last, so Level Up was recorded, my part at least, was recorded at my home studio, and so I'm waiting. So what's your home studio look like? It's, like give, give us a visual. <laughs> it's a desk with my computer. Um, speakers and a microphone hooked up to like a, a microphone cage and um, I have an interface that's literally just like for a microphone and a guitar plug and then that's that's plugged to the laptop <laughs> yeah exactly it's nothing like super serious no hey dude I just got this I've been doing this piece of junk microphone right here this now this is considered my travel mic because mm-hmm. I was using this to do all the intros and stuff right I was like you know what I gotta stop because it, it started <laughs> crappy I was like, so I had to buckle down and buy like a two hundred dollar microphone. Yeah, that's and it's one of those. You ever seen what Joe Rogan like uses the, mm-hmm. the arms and they yeah it's like that? I feel like yeah, that's right. I got a good microphone. <laughs> yeah, and then it's, but then it's like, well, then look at my studio. It's just my laptop on a desk and that microphone and headphones. Right. Yeah. My home. <laughs> so there's nothing to be. I've been using this. About. I've been using the same microphone since my eighth grade year of high school. Oh yeah. This but, one's. This one's. Since I started podcast, four years old. Yeah, it's yeah. The one I've been using, it is old as dirt. I say old as dirt, but it's um, it's it also shows that it's been good quality. Taken care of too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I'm hoping to start going to a studio in Mobile to start recording my newer music because I really am trying to take that step up. I have a new job now. Um, You're not working at. Uh... I'm not working at the Inn anymore. <laughs> Uh, I'm working at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College as a student worker doing uh, enrollment services. So what is, is that where you just, people going to enroll and you just take them through the process? Basically, basically, basically and that's, that's like a blanket statement for it. There's a lot of different stuff that I do. And like, so you're uh, going to college as a student too? Yes. When, when are, are they going to start back or are they going to? Are yeah, they going we're starting, to we're starting back with like a, um, a new class program like or model I guess I should say um, basically all the classes are going to be online but each class is going to have a specific day where you can go to like a classroom setting if you wish I have an eight o'clock class that's supposed to happen Monday Wednesday Friday I'm gonna just do that entire class online <laughs> dude I did when I went to college I went right out of high school mm-hmm. the next semester so like I didn't go in I went in January so I skipped out on like the September one. It went in January. Okay. Dude, college, college is not for everybody. And I realized once I was doing I couldn't do this, work, and college at the same time. So right. I was like, one of them's got to go. And I think I'm pretty smart sufficiently. Yeah. So I might as well just. But how they're doing school now with this cur- is nuts. It's like, uh, what don't. Aggra- and we're not going to get political. I'm, I'm what, trying not to get what political. What irritates <laughs> me about it is. The kids are not all, but we'll put it this way. If the kid gets sick, the students or the teachers of the school does not have to tell you. They don't have to tell you they're sick with the Yeah, virus. talking about, what are like, you talking, are you talking about, about Biloxi? Or it no, was a Biloxi, I think? All in Mississippi schools. That's what that idiot Tate Reeves said. Yeah, um, Tate Reeves, it seems he like. He has ruined his chances like of I, getting elected again. I'm sorry. Yeah, Tate Reeves, for like every one good step you took, you took like ten bad steps back for me. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. like the whole flag issue, oh one God. one good step forward. And the then score. what happened? Three steps back. Exactly. Like, uh, but I it, 
How hard would it be to say there's no there's no school this year? It's all online. But if you have to come to class, come these days. Exactly. That's exactly exactly, exactly how like, Perk's doing it. It's not gonna hurt. It doesn't matter if they're elementary or not. They're still gonna, you know, it, because th- take this mask. I'm holding up a mask. Take this for example. What are kids gonna do with these things? They're gonna they're trade gonna them. Pop each other. They're, they're gonna, gonna pop go, each other. Hey, I got a burp. Uh, yeah. I got a sneeze and a sneeze. I saw. Come a, on now. I saw a funny. Um, I saw a funny meme on Facebook <coughs> or something like that, and it said, um, it said, I just saw a lady pull down her mask in Walmart to sneeze. See y'all in 2022. <laughs> now I was listening to Dr. Fauci. That's the one that I believe, just in general. He was talking about, said that we were crazy if we thought we were going to go into 2021, January 1st, with no masks. He said we could be another year exactly. with these masks like, because I don't, the vaccines aren't going to, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily trust everything that no, Dr. Fauci right, says, right, but right. I also don't believe that he should just be completely written off as like a lunatic or just like, you know, a... The devil's advocate or whatever. Well, it's I don't, like all doctors. They get stuff wrong sometimes. Yeah, I don't believe everything he says or says that we should do. Or Trump. But, or Trump, yeah. Like, yeah, it's... Let's move from politics. <laughs> we can be here all day. See, I don't... I used to always say, I don't know nothing. But I duality, I know a lot. So I'd always say that just so I didn't have to say nothing, and this wouldn't happen like that. Like, that's... I've always said that. And then people are like, "Why? Why do you say you don't know that you know everything?" Just that, for that reason. I do my best. Like I, I try to my best to have. If I'm gonna have like a very serious political conversation, <laughs> I try to make sure it's with with like my four or five friends that I have. Right. Yeah. Anyone else, I'll have like blanket conversations, but like I won't go super deep into anything unless it's like my my friend group. Do you know who the author uh, Malcolm Gladwell is? No, I don't think so. Well, I'm reading this. I read one was called Blink. It was like how to go with your gut. It's like these kind of these, not really a self help, but he puts them in with non fiction stories, like stuff that's actually happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm reading one now. It's called David and Goliath, and it's about how you can face your demons in a different way. Like he come up with the situation, like David uh, brought the thing that he uh, Goliath was probably kind of like had a disease, like um, like Andre the Giant, for example. All right. Because he was just so tall. Mm-hmm. And that disease causes you can't move right, you can't see. So he probably didn't see David coming when he should have been shocked. In actuality, he was, he was whatever he was doing. Right. And he was talking about how David was throwing the rocks, the scientists say, at like 0.25 seconds. Every rock of 2.5 seconds. <laughs> and he was like, if he used the um, slingshot, it would have took at least 6.8 seconds. So he believed that he was throwing them. It was basically saying that instead of David saying, no, we're going to go fight hand-to-hand, he found a different way around it. So how do you find different ways around situations that are tough? Oh, that's a tough question. Exactly. <laughs> um, let's see. That's, that's a good question, though. Um, I think it really just depends on what the situation is. Um, well, what's the hardest situation you've ever been through? Or if it's too um, personal, you ain't gonna say. But um, I went through a, a, a bad breakup. Okay. Um, Why did you? I went through a tough breakup. How'd you deal with that? Was that recently? Or I did not. Ago? I did not. Uh, it was two and a half oh, okay. ish years ago. Okay. I so. didn't know if it was a girl with now. That's no, why I was no, asking. No, no, I was no, like, no. wow. No, me okay. and the girl I'm with now are doing good. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the girl I dated before this. Okay. Girl. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, um, just not to get like super personal with it, but just like I was. I should have let her go, but my I did not want to because we dated for so long, yeah. and I did not want to let her go, and so I just, part of it was just, you know, having, like, realizing that, you know, um, people are only in your life for seasons, you know, and I had to realize that, and... You should have wrote a song called Seasons. <laughs> Actually, it's funny that you say that because, um... I think my church is actually, uh, I go to Venture, and yeah. we have a, a, like, a worship band that, like, records and releases music, right. along with, like, just everybody who sings at church as well, and um, I think they're working on a song called Seasons, I think, <laughs> so, yeah, it's actually funny. Circle back around. Yeah, it does, um, but, yeah, I just, I'm a very optimistic person, and so, Whenever something happens, I'm always looking for the po- I'm looking at the positive sides of things, you know. 
like you may have even mentioned this on your Black Lives Matter podcast because I was listening to that last night. What'd you think about it? Uh, was it okay? Yeah, I, I thought it was one of the best ones I've done yeah, just I'm, because it was just so different. Yeah, I'm like, I think I'm halfway through it, I think, mm-hmm. and I'm enjoying it. You know, uh, Shira's an awesome lady. Um, Educa- uh, very smart. Very smart. smart. Than I am. <laughs> very smart. Um, thank you for that connection as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so just listening to that, um, I think you said something along the lines of, like, you know, George Floyd's death was a tragedy, but it also, like, it opened up, like, it opened up everyone's eyes to all the other things that were happening. It was a, it was a bad thing, but also it was a good thing. Like, you exactly. took the positive out of the negative. Yeah, like, I'm a very, like, I look at positives out of, like, I, I'm always looking for the positive in things, even if it's, like, a s- super bad situation. I've, I'll, I kind of feel like my, not to this extreme, but, like, the story of Job in the Bible that is always like I don't think I could go necessarily through everything that Job went through mm-hmm. but Job's characteristic the way he always just you know everything kept happening and happening and happening and he just kept saying I'm going to keep worshiping God I'm going to keep chasing after God and that was, that's always how I've always been no matter what I'm going through even if I seem to like kind of turn my back on God for a little bit I always like seem to turn around and come back that's my deep answer to that deep question <laughs> So you mentioned earlier that um, what do you what do you plan on doing when you go to Mobile for this new studio? What is it going to give you in a bigger picture besides a better sound? Besides um, more professionality? Hope, well, I'm not. I don't have it fully set in stone yet. Which studio I'm going to go to? Because there are two very nice studios. Yeah. Um, that I'm trying to choose between. Basically, it's going to come down to who has better prices. Because um. You know, I got a new job that pays me a little bit more than my old job did, but it's also still not like I can't be spending six hundred dollars on studio time. But yeah, that's a, that's, don't, people don't realize when you record stuff, you have to pay for every minute, every hour. Like, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so basically, I'm hoping my big hope is to get good sound quality out of this, um, to get pointers on like how to improve myself in my writing because I yeah. feel like. You know, not every engineer, like, studio engineer, will, like, necessarily, like, sit there and tell you, like, this is what you could do better or, like, do this differently. But the one professional studio session I've had with a, another band that I was recording a feature for, I went into the studio with them and recorded. Um, their engineer, he was like, okay, do this, do this, retake this. Re-, and then it turned out being, like, it's, like, the best I've ever sounded on a track. And so it's just... I'm hoping to get pointers like that. I'm hoping for a good sound quality, and I'm also hoping that it will build some connections. Cause like a lot of these guys at studios, like it's not just working at the studio is their job. You know, they do live sound or they do, um, you know, they work with other artists that you could have connections right. with and stuff like that. So I'm hoping not just to get. I mean, if I go to these studios and I just get the good sound quality, that'll be fine. Cause that's what I'm really looking for. But if I get these connections or all these other things, that'll be perfect like that'll just be an awesome add-on now by doing this um just just a little while long, I ain't got one left. Uh, what if what has happened like have you ever met an idol that you looked up to and just be like wow what's gonna happen here with this music thing <laughs> um i guess i haven't really met any of my huge idols because a lot of my big idols are guys that are you know make millions of dollars off of their music and have millions of followers, you know. But um, I did meet one guy who is not a huge star or anything, but he's a... He's well-known. He's well-known in the Christian rap realm. His name's Stephen Malcolm. He's um He's been nominated for Dove Awards, which are like Christian Grammys, right, basically. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. He's been nominated for like Christian Rap Album of the Year and like... Christian rap song of the year stuff like that um, he's he's done Winter Jam if you know what Winter Jam is I'm familiar with it not yeah. really knowledgeable he's, he's but, performed yeah. at Winter Jam before like gone on tour with them and um, so he's a well known guy he's not like big famous you know like mainstream but he's very popular in this realm and um, 
I got to meet him and hang out with him for like an entire evening at one of his shows. I got to go. I got to hang out backstage with him and me and him talked for like an hour or two just about music. And this was back. Um, this was two years ago, probably. And he just, you know, getting to meet him, just kind of realigned my vision a little bit. I started realizing, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter if I say I'm a Christian artist or not. Like, I'm going to get, if I make the music, it's going to attract whoever it attracts. And I'm still going to do these church shows, but I'll also, you know, like, I went on a two-night tour this year, which is crazy. Um, They were both socially distanced shows and all that. But uh, I went to Oklahoma with this band, Envision, very good friends of mine. And um, we did a church show on Saturday, and then we did a bar show on Sunday, both in Oklahoma. How weird is it to do a it's, show in, in the middle of a pandemic? It was, it was awkward because you know it's it's somewhat different because they're a rock band, so they're not necessarily. Are they a Christian rock band or just a rock band in general? Rock band in general. Okay. They are. They have Christians in the band. Some guys who aren't Christian in okay. the band, and they play. Like they make music that they want to make, and they let people know, like, hey, um, we would love to pray with you after the show if you're down for that. But like, you know, the bar show, like, they did one of their more Christian songs, and it got like the biggest round of applause, even though it was a show where probably not many people in there were probably Christian. Right, right. And um, but yeah, doing a show during the pandemic, it was. You know, for me being a rapper, I'm used to there being like a mosh pit, people turning up, you know, going crazy. And having the hand going up and down. <laughs> yeah, the hand going up and down. But to have everybody just kind of standing, you know, separate pews apart mm, and just yeah. kind of staring at you and like just clapping after every song, you know, it was it was awkward, but it was still fun getting to do shows because that's like one of my favorite things to do as an artist. And then um, the bar show, that was just... It was just awesome because it was my first bar show and it was just a fun experience. You know, everybody there was like super cool. Um, you know, honestly, I've had like that bar show was a really good experience. I've had church shows that I've done where the experience was like 10 times worse than the bar show was. And so it's just, you know, uh, you know, Jesus sat with sinners. Jesus, you know, he said, it's not this, it's not the healthy that need a doctor, it's the sick. And so, you know, just wherever I can, wherever my music goes, wherever, whoever it can reach, that's who I want it to reach. Let me ask you a hard question here. Let's say someone was to come to you. Let's, let's, let's use Death Row Records, for example, because <laughs> they're still big. Let's just say they go and they say, Greg, you've got great potential. We know you love God. We know you're a Christian. But what if we drop that from your image and you just become this big rapper and you make this is your setting salary right here and it's like eight point six million dollars a year? Would you do it? I would not. You would not do it. I would not do it. I would. You know, many people would say yeah, definitely. I I know people in the Christian rap (laughs) world who would say yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, but that I mean, look at Chance the Rapper, who I mean, he's not exactly the greatest example because he still makes music sometimes. That's like you know. Is he a Christian rapper? He's he's he made he. I've heard like one song. That shows how much rap I listen to. <laughs> he is a, I believe that he is a Christian, okay. but he doesn't necessarily make Christian rap music. He, okay. He's made some Christian rap songs, but as a whole, I would not classify him as a Christian rap artist. That's like, um, you ever heard of Fozzy? The rock band Fozzy? Yeah, I have. Is yeah. that, is, is there a lead singer, Chris the, Jericho? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, I got to listen to the band. It's my favorite. It's one of my heroes, right? Right. And so, I would categorize him that as well. He's a and he's, they, they he's a Christian, it, but also the the band sings kind of Christian like rock hair songs. Like they have yeah. a song called Judas uh-huh. about how you know the, the Judas and Jesus. Like right. how Jesus took Judas's spot. He's like, what am I gonna do now? I'm becoming Judas in my own head, letting exactly. the things get yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. So yeah, but but yeah, I know a lot of people, not just in Christian, but just be like, look. I would take this. I would change my image and get all tattooed. Just you, you know, just do what I was not doing, just to make it big. Exactly. Just like, yeah. Aren't you kind of selling your soul at that point? Yeah, like that's M&M, like that's, like, that's <laughs> kind of like you know, like I feel like a lot of people when it comes to saying like these artists are selling their souls. I feel like they're not literally like you know cutting their hand yeah, doing yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like a blood sacrifice yeah. or whatever. It's like they're just basically signing their lives Did away. Did you see that? It's on Netflix. I can't remember the guy's name. It was a black uh, blues artist. I know you're talking um, about the um, 
He's from Mississippi. Yeah, and he basically literally sold his soul to yeah, the devil. Yeah, he went to the crossroads. Yeah. Crossroads, that's it. He sang that song, eh, the crossroads. I know from John Mayer, but... I know who you're talking about. I, I can't forget think his of the name. guy's name for nothing, but he literally sold his soul to the devil, and it just went missing one day. Yes, yeah, I know. That's, that one's crazy. And I was like, oh, man. Yeah, stuff like that is crazy, but when it comes to, like, modern music, I feel like... You know, there's some like crazy stuff out there. There may be people who are. I'm gonna look up that guy for quick because it's gonna bug me. I know that there's. I'm sure that there are people out there like there's there's evil in the music industry, but also I feel like some people like some people just do it for like that's like their aesthetic, that's their image. Like you know, Billie Eilish. I really like Billie Eilish, but a lot of oh. people think that she's like a satanic Come artist. On, yeah. Robert yeah. Johnson. Robert that's Johnson. Robert yeah, Johnson. That's who it is. Come on, you you really think? Just, Billy like, Eilish. I re- said, that, my mom was talking about that the other day. She was like, you know, that's they're talking about that um, all the children go to, or whatever that song is called. All the all the good girls go to hell. There you go. Yeah. Hey, you that's, like, I'm, I'm going to expose myself real quick. That's one of my favorite Billy Eilish songs. That's a great song. The whole, you just heard her whole first album. Where yeah. Go with, fantastic. And what makes one it better? One of my favorite albums last year. Well, what makes it better? She has an office in there, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite she's a, shows. Yeah, she has. She's did a big you watch the fan. one where she, uh, the uh, Rain Wilson, came to her she, place? Yeah, and they did like an office quiz or yeah. whatever. Yeah, that was. I, I could saw do that. that to like. What would be one show that you could do that? Like, just answer everything. Um, or a couple, whichever. Um, probably, maybe. Mm, I'm gonna say, but I may not actually mean it. Um, Supernatural, American okay. Horror Story, and like. That's some good coffee, too, man. Yeah, I love I love the coffee here at Southern Turnings. Um, 13 Reasons Why, maybe? Nah, because I haven't finished 13 Reasons Why. <laughs> I still got I still got the last season to go. Um, I, yeah, I can do my genre, man. My genre is the 90s. I, I mean, I would say Friends, but I don't know Friends as much my as girlfriend, I know, like, My girlfriend has watched Friends like three times all the way through. She loves three times. Yeah, she Dude, loves Friends. Fifteen here. Yeah, she loves Friends. She can answer so much stuff about it. Yes, yeah, I, I can do like King of Queens, all the like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Four right. House, all those, mm-hmm. all those great things. But uh, I posted an Instagram story today, and you replied to it. One of your favorite songs was uh, Sam or the albums was Sam Hunt Southside. Southside by Sam Hunt. So I it's actually, could, um, if you go like I don't know if you know, but like. Apple Music. Yeah. I, oh, I mean, like at Spotify, like at the end of the year, they do like the rewind thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple, Apple music, music does the same thing. Apple somewhat. Music, they do the same thing, but they're letting people access it early, and it's like your favorite music so far. Right, right. And I accessed it whenever the link went out, and my number two album of the year was South Side by Sam Hunt, and I didn't even realize I'd listened to it that much. <laughs> Cause like We're, I really like that album. There's only like two songs on there that I didn't really dig. Right. And I'm gonna, then I'm gonna pull my phone up because give me some of your most listened to songs. Some of, okay, I know what number or, one or is. albums. Which my number one most listened to album I already know is. I gotta on figure out how the, to do this on Apple Music. The mm-hmm. Hamilton soundtrack. I have not watched it. Is Watch it, good? it, bro. It's is it so good? good. It's it's literally like the best thing that's happened in 2020. <laughs> I love Let's it. Let's see here. A lot of free. A lot of my friends were like, uh, "It was all right. The rapping just wasn't my thing." And like these are guys who are like listen, right. like they're rappers themselves, and they were like, "The rapping was just weird to me." And I'm like, "The rapping was so intricate. Like it was awesome. <laughs> like it took seven years for Lin Manuel Miranda to write Hamilton." Yeah. And you, uh, I got muscle. It's not in any order. It's just the albums I've listened to the most this year um, would be "If I Know Me" from Morgan Wallen. Okay. And then it would be. Um, Let's see here. Sunday Drive from Brett Eldridge. Okay. And then it's got uh, Eminem's new album. Um, Murder music to, to be, music, music, music to be, be murdered, murdered by. by. It wasn't a, wasn't. It was a it was a step in the right direction for Eminem. That's how that's that's how I would look at it. It was a step in the right direction because like there were some songs that I really was digging like one, um, the song Lock It Up with Anderson Hawk. Yeah. I love that song. See, here's my here's my problem with that. Not a problem. I like the first half better than the second half. I think I may like the second half more than the first half. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't I haven't gone back and listened to like the entire thing all the way through since it came out. But there's like been those few songs that I listen to on a regular basis, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. But like Lock It Up featuring Anderson Pac. Um, I liked Godzilla with Juice World. It was a. It wasn't. You know, it wasn't his greatest song by any means, but it was a good. Right. It, yeah. It wasn't. No. It wasn't the best. But. For him, 
from the recent pop stuff he's put out. Right. I was a fan of his pop stuff. So it's not my time now. <laughs> so what are some of yours? Let's see. I'm trying to. F- okay, so Hamilton's number one. I know that much. I think Southside was number two. That was on mine as well. Um. Let me see. I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. Um, I know um, there wasn't like um, Logic's newest album, No Pressure, uh, or is actually his, his last album. <laughs> He's retiring. Come on now, you really? I think that? he no. I, after watching his his big, he did like a six part interview with um. But you don't think they're doing Hard it Knocks just to TV. promote it and make it this biggest album? I think I think that this is Logic's last album for at least like six or seven years. That's probably. What I'm he may take a break, but he, I don't think he's, he's fully taking, done. He's at least taken a long hike. Doesn't he just have a kid? Yeah, he just Isn't had that a what kid. He's doing. He's trying to just raise. He's moved. He moved to Montana. He's not living in Los Angeles anymore. He's like he's he's. I would Logic's a guy who like. Sometimes he said things and went back on them, but he's also a guy who, like, I, whenever he explained why he was retiring, I thought that's like that sounds just like Logic, and so I would not be surprised if Logic never drops another album. But if he did take a long break and then dropped it, I would be like, okay, I, okay, I, I, I saw this coming at the same time. I saw that coming just as much as I saw him never dropping an album again. So when you listen to like an Eminem or Logic, do you listen to the explicit version or the clean cut? Yeah, I listen. I, I listen to the explicit version. I do because I don't like it going. You know, yeah, it, it throws me off. Um, Even though I don't curse, it's just it's still the same. Like which, yeah, I just can't stand. I just don't really care that much. Oh, me to either. be honest, like. I know, like, there are people that I know who are, like, very against cussing, and there are some people I know who don't think that cussing is actually a sin, and I'm, I'm just, like, I just don't really I don't care, care that it's much. a word. <laughs> you know, I just don't really care that much. I don't do it that much, but I just don't really care either. What are your thoughts on them pushing Black Widow back? Because I know we're big Marvel fans. I saw it coming. Well, obviously, but... I, I saw it coming, and on it, like, you know, I'm excited for the Black Widow movie. I... I like Black Widow. I like Scarlett Johansson. Me too. Man. <laughs> uh, I'm also excited because Florence Pugh is going to be in it, and that's like who the heck is that? Florence Pugh. She. Um, oh, is that supposed to be her sister? Yeah, the sister. Okay, okay. She's one of my favorite new. Like, she's my celebrity crush kinda, and so that she's going to be in this movie, and so that's just yeah. But I'm. I, what is she played in? Because I don't she, even know. Um, her she's name. she's been okay. She was in Little Women. She got not like I think she got uh, nominated. I've seen Little, it. Little Women was one was probably one of the best movies to come out last year, and um, she got nominated she for like best supporting actress I think, and um, then she was in Midsummer the horror movie. I seen it. It was, it was all right. It was decent, but she did a good job. Like okay. even though the movie was decent, she did a good job. The movie looked terrible with the trailer and the. I don't know. I don't remember what I went to watch. It was. I, yeah, I, I don't think you would have liked it because after listening to your Terrifier interview, you said you don't really like the psychological stuff. Yeah, they're not my favorite. I, I like the psychological stuff. That's see, I'm okay with the Insidious a little bit. Yeah. But they kind of went nuts after like the second or third one. Yeah. The, oh yeah. Insidious went kind of off the track a little bit. And did you uh, on the because uh, we're big fans of that Terrifier movie. Yeah, I've really I really I don't want to bring it up in my interview, but did you get to the point where he's talking about? The lady being upside down. Yeah, that was crazy. What did you think about that? How that was nuts. wild. I was shocked midway. I, was, I, was I, knew, like, I knew, I knew, like whenever you said, like on the Facebook post, you said, right. like, you said we talk about the hardest scene to film in Terrifier, and I was like, oh, I know, like I'm, I'm like ninety eight percent sure what that scene was, and then he said it, and I was like, I knew it. But what got me was, was she was upside down for thirty seconds, at, and it was up for three minutes, and I'm yeah, like, I get how long did it take to film that? To film that? Yeah, I know, I get what you're saying. Well, yeah. you took all day. It was wild. But yeah, Terrifier was a real. It just like, you know, I think the second one, honestly, I feel like the second one's going to be better than the first one because they have like a. It seems like yeah. they have a bigger budget now and it's going to be shot better. Yeah. yeah. But like the first one, also, I liked how it had that like B movie feel to it. You know, like it wasn't shot yeah. amazingly, but it was still a good movie. It was just a good old fashioned slasher movie. And that's what Which I loved about my it. My favorites. I loved about that. And so, um, yeah, um, Black Widow, 
excited for it. I like I I just I don't like the people who are like, oh, they're trying to push the feminist agenda, and I'm just like, bro, like we need some female, like we need we should have female superpower movie. Like I mean, I get being mad, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel wasn't the greatest movie, but it wasn't the worst. Yeah, it wasn't terrible. It was okay. It was better than the Captain Americas, the first one at least. Yeah, I'd probably uh, say it was better than the first Captain America. The first Captain America was boring. Now the dude. second, second and third one were. Are Winter, so- Winter Soldier is probably my favorite of all. Winter the, Soldier uh, and Civil Marvel War. Movie. Civil War and um, Winter Soldier are definitely in my top five, probably. But um, yeah, Cap or Black Widow. I think it's going to be a. I'm not going to say I think it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a good it. movie. It's going to be freaking fantastic because got my celebrity crush in it. <laughs> and she's in that tight black suit and she's like long. Because what what what? It screwed it up when they made her go blonde. In like Infinity War, I don't know. I kind of dig the blonde. In I was Infinity so turned off. I was like, "What are you doing?" No. <laughs> I just wish they would have given her like normal eyebrows, like the blonde eyebrows weren't it. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I'm really, I'm excited for it. I, I mean, I wouldn't be mad if they put if they put it straight to Disney Plus. I oh, wouldn't God. be mad, but. Okay, now here's my thing. They're releasing Mulan. Oh yeah. I've never Mulan. seen Mulan. Never seen it. Never seen Mulan. Mulan so, is a, probably one of the more underrated Disney okay. princess movies. Never seen it, so so I don't have a really a care for this new. One. But they're releasing it for like thirty bucks. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. So would you pay for that? I'm. I have mixed opinions on that. I probably will pay for it because I was kind of excited to see it, but at the same time, like, I was kind of. I get why they're doing it because I mean, you know, if you just send it to Disney Plus, like that's losing like millions of dollars probably in profit but at the same time why not just release it straight to like dvd instead of releasing it to disney plus and then making people pay 30 dollars for it so here's my thing if i can't say this i'll cut it out <laughs> but i'm part of this group because i'm a movie reviewer on the podcast right mm-hmm. people came to me and like hey we want you to get these movies and you can vote on them and see which ones are the best ones can give you what they give me and you can watch it for free <laughs> that's how i watch most of all of mine it's just like hey i may i may i may take you up on that as long as it doesn't put a virus on my computer no no I it's may, a, no it's a I'll take you later. Uh, I, I may take you up on that because <laughs> i wouldn't want to pay 30 dollars yeah but I, there's also these websites that you could use uh, yeah I, I don't trust those <laughs> i don't trust those websites <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Black Widow. I'm looking forward to the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I'm kind of scared though, man. I'm scared at the same time. I'm I'm about as scared as I am excited. I'm excited for these TV shows. I'm I'm maybe more excited for these TV shows than the movies. Here's why I'm scared for the new Avengers types of movies because I'm not really a fan of Captain Marvel. Spider Man is my favorite. I love Spider Man. But but they're gonna keep Spider Man. Not as neutral in it because of how he is. Like, like he's everybody's favorite, mm-hmm. so they're not gonna put him in the whole thing. That's what I was reading. They're gonna keep him in like twenty minutes of it. I'm not gonna watch that. Are you nuts? I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm obviously gonna, I'm gonna, gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch every movie that Marvel puts out. Even every TV show. Every they Marvel has Marvel Studios has a loyal customer. Did in you ever me. watch The Punisher? On Netflix. I did not. I take that back. I didn't watch everything the Marvel Cinematic Universe puts out. I will watch. Let me tell you, The Punisher. That is the I've, that I've, is the best. Mar- it was take away Luke Cage and all that. That is the best Marvel TV show they've ever released. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot of good things it, about it. I've heard Agents of Shield started off good and then never got. Watched it. Never I've, seen it. I've heard Agents of Shield started off good and then just kind of like got mediocre. Well, here's my thing about. They're making Marvel movies, and then they make these TV shows and cast different people as the characters in the movies. <laughs> yeah, I get what I, you're and, saying. Yeah. just like, well, if I, I want Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I get what you're Fury. saying. I don't want Martin Fishbourne or whoever he is. I get what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> or Idris Elba. <laughs> now, nah, Idris Elba. I, I like me some Idris Elba. <laughs> But Except I for get, that Hobbs I, and Shaw movie. Did you watch that? I did not watch that. Was, that. that was freaking terrible, man. I've heard. I heard it was actually pretty good, but I, yeah, I haven't watched. I'm not. I'm never been a huge, huge fan of Fast and Furious. Shoot, me, man. That's one of my, besides Marvel. That's probably my other favorite. See, I, I couldn't put Star Wars in there because I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I like. I like Star Wars. I watched I'm a, them, but I'm not like you know like. There's so much divide in the Star Wars community because of like people are like the sequels were good, the sequels were terrible. I'm just like, I, if they were, if it was a decent movie, I probably enjoyed it. I enjoyed the sequels, even though nobody else like some people think that the sequels are like 
god awful like. I didn't necessarily. L- you talking about like <clears throat> the ones with uh, the Christian guy, the um, Hayden Christensen or something? No, no, no. no those are the prequels. I'm talking about the Pre- like the sequels. You talking about the ones that like the Rise of Skywalker? Rise of Skywalker. Those are terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not the one. I'm not a big star. I'm not gonna wear a Star Wars shirt. I'm, I watch them. But I, I, yeah, I thought I enjoyed they, them. Once Disney took over from Lucas Films. I, the I big, the big. Of, I think the big <clears throat> thing where like where Disney went wrong with the movies is that when they came out and said we're gonna have three different directors for each movie, yeah. they should have let one person, unless something came up like J.J. Abrams. I really liked The Force Awakens. I get that it was basically yeah. um, a last hope, like just a redo. They do yeah, redid just like yeah, completely yeah, redid. Yeah. But I still enjoyed it, <laughs> so. I think J.J. Abrams, if they let him have, like, complete control, not complete control, because obviously nobody has complete control these days, yeah. but, like, if they let him direct and have the vision for all three of them, I think they would have turned out a lot better than they did. But then there are people who just think that Force Awakens was, like, absolute trash and that J.J. Abrams ruined Star Wars, so, you know. <laughs> I don't think he ruined it. I don't think it was the best, but it wasn't the worst. The new one, whatever the new one is. Rise of Skywalker. It was terrible. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I liked it. It probably is, you know, thinking about it, it probably is my least favorite out of the three, but I still liked it. I'm not that hardcore of a Star Wars fan. Like, me, did, me either. I'm, like, me I either. like them. I like them. I, I'm watching The Mandalorian right now. Over Mandalorian. Is it any good? Really good. Now really good. I, I, I will probably say I like The Mandalorian probably more than any of the sequel movies. Okay. But I'm still, like, I'm still going to say I like the sequels. I'm not going to, like, even if I don't like them as much as... Mandalorian. I'm still going to say, yeah, I like them. I'm not going to say, oh, they were trash or they weren't good or blah. I just, I enjoyed them. People always say the prequels weren't good. I enjoyed the one with, um, uh, I will find you, uh, Liam Neeson. The oh, um, the Phantom Menace. I like that. That one was all right. <laughs> that one was all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, look, we've been going for an hour. Go ahead and give out all your information, socials. Uh, you what can you fun- want to promote? Uh, Greg Hartley. You can find me on Instagram at Greg Hartley Official. You can find me on Facebook um, at Greg Hartley Music, I think. Uh, Twitter is at Greg underscore underscore Hartley. And you can find me on TikTok at Greg Hartley Official. Um, I have a new song out now called Level Up featuring Caleb Tucker and Jason. It is out September 25th on all streaming platforms. And um, shout out to all my brothers in the Bless Up group chat. (laughs) No, I mean, appreciate it.